Welcome to Amazing Dinosaurs. I'm Dave, and this is a collection of over 20 Transformer figures from Beast Wars and more. Plus, I've got a few brand new figures to open up, too. First up, and one of the largest in this bin, is this Predacon Megatron figure from the Beast War series. Right now, he's in his bot form. You can see that he's got a T-Rex arm on one side, and the other arm is super long, and it has this clamp right on the end that you can open and close. And then in the center here, you can see all the armoring, and it actually has a helmet armor plating that you can close over his face. Check that out. And now let's go ahead and transform him into his beast form. And here is Predacon Megatron in the beast form. Looks like a T-Rex. It's got the green on the top, purple on the sides, and it actually has a water gun hidden in its mouth. Next up is the Tyrannocon Rex figure, and this figure was actually made in collaboration with Jurassic Park. Just like Megatron, it looks like this figure's got the T-Rex face on one arm and a huge claw on the other. I think this is the tail of the T-Rex, as we'll see in a minute. And it's got some pretty cool armoring too, the bright red and then the black. So now let's change this figure into its robot form. And here it is in its beast form, another mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This one though is in the classic orange and brown coloring. Next up, I'm gonna grab this other Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This is another Megatron beast figure, but this one is from the Kingdom War for Cybertron series. It's got pretty cool coloring with the purple on the sides, the blue on the top. It is very poseable and looks pretty good for a T-Rex. But now, let's go ahead and transform it to its bot form. Here is Megatron in his bot form. Once again, we've got the T-Rex head on one arm and on the other arm is this massive claw. And of course, it's got some really cool purple and gray armoring and check out that helmet too. Next up is the Rhinox figure from the Kingdom War for Cybertron series. Here it is in the beast form. You can see it's got armor plating over the entire body and these two huge horns in the front. So now let's transform it and see what it looks like. And here is Rhinox in the bot form. It's got some really cool gold plating right on the front, some massive legs and some pretty big arms, and the rhino head is right on the back. Now let's open up one of the brand new ones. We're gonna first open up this Beast Wars Optimus Primal figure. All right, this is a pretty large figure, and this figure actually has a special action feature. You can see this little knob on its back, and it goes up and down, and when you do that, it actually can beat its chest and move its arms back and forth. But now, let's go ahead and transform this into its bot form. And here is Optimus Primal in the bot form. He's got a really cool mask that's actually covering his face. And the figure comes with this mace, as well as this huge staff right here. And you can still use the action button on its back to swing its arms around. Plus, there's another hidden action button on its back that actually launch some cannons from behind its back, and you can actually fire these as well. Next up for the brand new figures is the Transformers Legacy Evolution Transmetal Megatron figure. Let's open it up. Whoa, all right. This one is probably my favorite one out of my entire collection. The design on this one is amazing. He's got a huge flame for a club right here. Check out that cool diamond right in the center. And his other arm is a dragon head, which will be the beast that he transforms into. So let's go ahead and start the transformation. And there we go in its beast form. Yeah, this for sure is my favorite figure. I mean, dragons are just really cool to begin with, but this is a really cool transformation. Check out those wings, and it's got this super long neck, and it has the tail as well with the spikes at the end. This for sure is my favorite one in my entire collection. And next up, we've got a dinosaur transform figure from Jurassic World. 
All right, so right now it looks to be an Endoraptor figure. So let's see what figure it transforms into. And here it is. It looks like it's a Brachiosaurus figure. You can still see some of the coloring from the Endoraptor. That's pretty funny. Look, it looks like a pretty angry Brachiosaurus too. This next figure is another Transformers figure that was done in collaboration with Jurassic World. As you can see, it has the Jurassic Park logo and it looks like it'll be turning into one of those Jeeps. So let's start that transformation. And now it is in its Jeep form, and this one looks really good with the detail and coloring. You can even kind of see through the windows there. Overall, this is a pretty cool Transformer figure. Next up is this Dinobot figure from the Kingdom War for Cybertron series. It looks to be a Raptor figure, I think. It's got the shorter front arms, the big back legs, and a really long tail, and the head also looks like a Raptor figure too. So now let's transform this into its bot figure. And here we go in the bot form. Now you can hardly tell that it used to be a Velociraptor. You can see a lot of gold armoring now. And what used to be the raptor tail can now be used as weapons. All right, that is pretty cool and very poseable too. Next up from the Beast Wars series is this Cheetor figure. It's pretty brightly colored, it's got spots all over. It is currently in its bot form, so you can see some blue armoring alongside the yellow. And it looks like he's got one huge weapon that he's holding in his hand right here. So now let's see it all transform into the beast form. And here it is in its beast form as a cheetah. Now almost all of its blue armor is completely covered and it's got some really cool green eyes. Next up is Predacon Scorpionok from Kingdom War for Cybertron. And it is currently in its beast form as you can see as a scorpion. It's got these huge pinchers in the front, a bunch of creepy crawly legs and then the stinger in the back. So now let's see what it looks like when we transform it to the bot form. And here is Scorpionok in the bot form. For this figure, the pinchers are still the hands. You can see that the legs are now tucked in behind the back, and it's still got this huge stinger coming out of its back for the attack. Next from Kingdom War for Cybertron is this Ractonite figurine. Looks like it is currently a skeleton, maybe a Triceratops or something like that. You can see that it's got the ribs on the side. Its tail looks like a skeleton as well. So now let's see what it looks like in its bot form. And here it is in the bot form. Looks like the dinosaur head is now part of the shoulder and he's got this huge weapon in his right hand. Looks kind of like a drill, might be a sword or something like that too. Next is another Kingdom War for Cybertron series figure. This is Tigatron. It is in its beast form, which is a white tiger and it's pretty well transformed. It looks quite realistic to a tiger, but now let's see it transform into its bot form. Now it is transformed into its bot mode. It looks quite a bit different. On the back, you can still see a ton of the tiger striping, but on the front, you can see quite a bit of some blue armor plating. And the figure comes with two weapons too. The first is a blaster looking weapon. So let's go ahead and set that in the right hand. And the second weapon, what used to be the tail, will now go on the left hand as a short range weapon. Next up, we've got a set. This is Optimus Primal, and this smaller figure here is Aerostripe, and they work together, and they'll transform into a combo pack. So let's first see Optimus Primal transform. And there we go. This was a bit of an easier one. It looks pretty similar to when it was in its beast form, other than its chest piece and its head. And now let's see what Arrow Stripe turns into. And there we go. It is actually a crossbow for Optimus Primal. 
to hold. That is pretty cool. Here I've got the Shadow Panther from the Kingdom War for Cybertron series. And the coloring is pretty good. It's all black on the outside. You can't see too much of the armoring yet. Now let's see it transform into its bot mode. And here it is in the bot form. Plus, it uses its tail as a weapon that it can hold in its hand. Just like that, it looks like it's some type of ax. Next up is one from the Transformers Legacy Collection. This is Predacon Tarantulas. Currently, it's in its beast form as a tarantula. It's got the purple and yellow body and the black legs. So now let's see it transform and we'll check out how it looks in the bot form. And here it is in the bot form. And now you can see some green armor plating. It also has the yellow boots too. And it's still fully utilizing all of those legs because it's attached to its arms. It looks really cool overall. Just a few more left. Next up, I've got another Rhinox figure. This one is from the new Rise of the Beasts movie. You can see he's holding a spinning weapon right here. It's got some gold armor plating. So now let's see him transform into the rhinoceros. <laughs> And here we go, it's a much smaller figure, and you can tell it has different types of detailing and coloring compared to the older versions. It's even got some metallic detailing along its face and on its side. Overall, this is a pretty cool figure. Small, but pretty cool. Next up is the Rat Trap figure from the classic Beast Wars series. Right now it's in its bot form, so now let's transform it into its beast mode. And just like that, almost instantaneously, it transformed into its beast mode. And that is a feature that's pretty cool, although it doesn't have as many features and isn't as movable. Here is another Rat Trap figure, but this is from the Kingdom War for Cybertron series. So here's the rat form, the beast form. Now let's transform it to its bot form. And here we go, it's a smaller piece. You can see now that it has some gold armor plating on its body that's being shown. You've got the Transformers head right there and the rat's head right underneath it too. Next up is this figure from Rise of the Beasts. This is TerrorCon Freezer and it is currently in its turret mode. As you can see, it's this ginormous gun and now we're gonna transform it into its bot mode. And here we go, fully transformed. And check it out, he's actually got two pairs of arms. And this is one gnarly looking transformer. Now here is Vertebrake from Kingdom War for Cybertron. Currently in its beast form as a skeleton dinosaur. So now let's see it transform into its bot mode. Here we go, it is one of the smallest Transformers yet that I have, and it does a pretty good job of hiding the beast mode, the skeleton dinosaur that it was. And last but not least, I've got the Dracodon figure from Kingdom War for Cybertron, which is very similar to the last one, but a bright green color. So let's transform this into its bot mode. And there we have it. This is Dracodon in the bot mode. Still almost completely green, although it has some gold armor pointing on the center of its body too. Today we're checking out a huge and totally brand new collection of Transformer figures. There's figures from Rise of the Beast, there's figures from Beast Wars, and some from the Kingdom War for Cybertron series. We're gonna start out with this first giant one. This is from the Beast Wars, and this is the Megatron figure that is in a dinosaur form. One of the coolest parts is that it has a water cannon inside of its mouth that you can fill up. And now let's turn this Megatron into its second form. And there he is. For one arm, Megatron has the Tyrannosaurus Rex jaw that still has that water cannon on the inside. And for the other arm, he has this huge claw clamp type thing that you can open and close. That is pretty cool. Next, let's grab this huge one in the back. This is actually a Jurassic Park and it has the Tyrancoon Rex and the Autobot JP-93. First, let's check out the car. 
Now this looks pretty similar to the Jurassic Park cars. It's got the same iconic coloring and design all over. Of course, you can tell that it transforms into an Autobot. So let's go ahead and do that. And there is Autobot 93 in its activated form. You can still check out that Jurassic Park logo right on its chest and on the doors on the side. And now let's go for this T-Rex. This T-Rex actually feels pretty hefty. There's quite a bit of weight to it. It's got the classic orange coloring like many of my actual Jurassic World figures. You can open and close the mouth, you can move the arms, and all the things that you could with many of the other figures. But this one transforms, so let's see that happen. And there we are. Wow, that was quite the transformation. Looks like the interior of the body is red and black, and it's got a pretty evil looking face. And this figure actually features a claw that is actually the T-Rex's face for chomping, and this other crazy claw that used to be a tail. Next, let's open up this one. This, I believe, is another Megatron, but it is from Kingdom War for Cybertron, and it is part of the leader class. This Megatron figure was in his robot form when it came, so now we're gonna put it into the T-Rex form. But before we do that, let's check out the details. There's a lot of purple going on. It seems like a bit more detail than the one that we opened up earlier. But all right, let's turn this into a T-Rex. And there it is, in the T-Rex form. It is absolutely crazy how intricate and detailed these are, because this looks pretty much like a real T-Rex. Next up, let's go with this Kingdom War for Cybertron, Rhino X. And here is the figure. Looks like it's mostly green and brown. And of course, it is in its robot form, so now let's turn it into a rhinoceros. And here is Rhino X in its beast form. Almost all of the green is hidden and it has the brown outside. And it's got those little red eyes and the huge horns too. It's pretty cool. Next up is the Tigatron figure from Kingdom War for Cybertron. Here is the Tigertron figure in its robot form. You can see the head right here, but also the tiger head right beneath that. And it's got some pretty cool coloring with the blue in certain spots, but most of its body is that white with black striping. So now let's get it into its tiger form. Got the tail here and that just pops right on and then finally a turret underneath all right here it is in tiger form that looks pretty cool it's got the striping all over its body but it still has a weapon accessible right on its belly too next up we're gonna check out this beast wars cheetor figure so right now it looks like it is in its cheetah form and it's super bright, it's got spots all over its body. So let's turn it into its transformer version. And in one hand goes one blaster. And it looks like this weapon is actually a water gun too. So you could actually fill it up with water. And the second blaster for the other hand. 
And there it is, Maximal Cheetor in its robot form. For our next Transformers Beast figures, we're gonna go with this Beast Wars Rat Trap figure. I think this might be the smallest Transformer figure that we've seen so far, and it looks pretty close to like a real life rat. But now let's see it transform. And there is Rat Trap, all ready to go. This was probably the easiest transformation that we've seen so far. And check it out, it's even got some hidden weapons on its sides right there too. Next up is this Kingdom War for Cybertron Dinobot figure. And this Transformer came in its robot form. The craziest part is check out these hands. Those are some huge, scary looking hands. And it's quite posable and it's a very lean looking Transformer. So now let's go ahead and transform it into the dinosaur. What dinosaur do you think it'll be? And here we go. What dinosaur do you think this is? This sure looks a lot like a Velociraptor to me. And you can still move its legs, its arms, you can open and close its jaw too. This next figure is another one from Kingdom War for Cybertron. This is Predacon Scorponok. Oh, this is another smaller figure again. So here it is in its robot form. Looks like it's got huge claws for both hands and it has posable arms, legs, and a head too. Plus it has this crazy tail coming out of its back. That's pretty wild looking. And now let's turn it into its beast form. And here we are in its scorpion form. It's still got the huge purple claws and the creepy crawly red legs. And best of all, this super massive stinging tail. Next up, we're gonna go with the Transformers Legacy Collection Predacon Tarantulas. This figure is very poseable. You can bend it at its knees, its ankles, its arms. Check out all those creepy Carly legs right behind its arms. And now let's see it in its beast form. Here we go, it is now a creepy crawly tarantula. It's got a lot of bright purple, yellow, and green on its body. And check it out, it's got the eight eyes too. Better watch out for these pinchers. Over here, we've got the Shadow Panther from Kingdom War for Cybertron. Let's check it out. And here is the Shadow Panther in its robot form. It's got the mostly black body. It also has some yellow on its shoulders and the bright silver helmet on its face. But now let's see it turn into its beast form. And for the final touch, the tail. And here we go, here is the Transformer in its beast form. It looks like a panther to me. Next up, we're gonna go with this smaller figure. We've seen this Transformer before, this is Rat Trap. And this figure is even smaller than the last Rat Trap that we saw from Beast Wars. Still, it is very poseable. So now let's see it transform into its beast form. And once again, here is Rat Trap in its beast form. And this one looks even more like a real life rat, I think. Next up from Kingdom War for Cybertron is Ractonite. This Transformer looks like it's made out of a lot of bones. Check out that huge Triceratops skull on its shoulder. And now let's see it transform into its beast form. And 
here it is in its beast form as a skeleton Triceratops figure. And this one was actually assembled a bit different than all the other figures. This one you actually took apart and then reassembled which I kind of like. Now we're getting to the smaller figures. This is another Kingdom War for Cybertron and it is the Dracodon Transformer. This is quite a small figure and it's got some bright coloring. Almost its entire body is a super bright neon green color. And it's got some gold in the center there too. Now let's see it transform into its beast form. And here we are. It is now in the, I think, a dragon form. Of course, it's got the all green body and its nails on its feet and its entire head are a gold color. This is a similar looking transformer. This is the vertebrake transformer. Let's check it out. You know what? This is looking very similar other than the coloring. So let's change it to its beast form and see how it compares. And there we have it. And you know what? I think this is actually the exact same figure, just colored differently. It even transforms in the same way. But it still looks really cool, and I really like this darker version. And here we've got the Transformers Rise of the Beast Rhinox figure. Let's check it out. Here it is starting out in its beast form as a rhinoceros. And you can really see that metallic texturing and detailing all over its body, which is really cool. But now let's see it transform into its robot form. And here we go, here is the Transformer. And this one was quite easy to do. You can see even more machine detailing on its body and it's got that gold on its chest and on its face too. Here's another small figure. This is the Studio Series TerrorCon Freezer. Now this is one crazy looking Transformer. It has some really cool rust detailing on its body and one crazy looking head too. And now let's see it transform. And I think this one transforms into a turret. And here it is in its turret form. This is one massive looking turret. And for our final Transformer, we've got a duo pack. This is from Transformers Rise of the Beasts and it has Optimus Primal and Aerostripe. Let's first start by transforming Aerostripe. Here it is, and it looks like a bow and arrow, the weapon for Optimus Primal. And here is Optimus Primal in its Transformers form. So let's turn it into the gorilla form. But before we do that, why don't we go ahead and attach the weapon and check that out. All right, that is one massive looking bow and arrow. Let's turn Optimus Primal into the gorilla form. And there it is, easy as that. You can see that it now has the gorilla face and it has the gorilla feet as well. This is a collection of Predator vs. Predator figures from Jurassic World, and we're gonna be comparing all of them against each other. The first two figures to face off in this collection is this Spinosaurus and this Battle Damage T-Rex. Let's check out the Spinosaurus first. This is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, so this one's actually pretty hard to find nowadays. It's got the huge front arms. It's got a long and narrow snout with a lot of teeth. And this figure is quite a bit larger than its opponent, the Battle Damage T-Rex. This figure is a bright orange color. It's got Battle Damage slashes painted all over its body, even right on its face and on its chin. Now this T-Rex has tiny arms compared to the Spinosaurus, but it's still got the same jaw chomping action. Next up for the verses is this T-Rex versus this Allosaurus figure. Let's start with the T-Rex. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Battle Damage T-Rex. It's got a darker orange body than the T-Rex that we just saw. And you can turn the battle damage on and off with the click of a button. And overall it has some pretty cool detailing and darker shading. Now let's see what's different about this huge Allosaurus figure, also from Jurassic World Dominion. Now this figure also has battle damage on the side, but you can even open it up and move the ribs to show the stomach underneath. Now this Allosaurus is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex, but it still has an awesome button 
for jaw chomping and sound effects. Up next for our predator competition is this Jurassic Park Utah Raptor versus this new Dino Trackers Endoraptor. Let's first check out this Endoraptor. It is super reflective. It's a dark blue color. I think it might be just around the same size as the Utah Raptor, but it's got some really cool actions. First, you can move its arms for some sound effects and a jaw chomping action. And it's also got a button on its back for more jaw chomping action. Now let's see how this super old Utah Raptor holds up. You can see that little Jurassic Park tattoo on its leg right there. Now this figure used to be battery operated, but unfortunately since it's so old, it doesn't work anymore. Like many of the vintage Jurassic Park figures, it has a soft rubbery skin and it still has a chomping action when you press down on its tail. Next, let's go with a Carnotaurus versus an Albertosaurus. The Albertosaurus is a little bit smaller than the Carnotaurus and it has much brighter coloring. It's got the orange stripe running down its side and the green body and the tail twists back and forth to control the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's check out this bigger Carnotaurus figure. This figure is dark brown with a gray underbelly. It's got even smaller arms than a T-Rex does. And you'll notice that the Albertosaurus arms are a little bit bigger. And just like the Albertosaurus, the tail swivels back and forth to move the head and for a jaw chomping action. For our next verses, let's grab this other Carnotaurus figure versus this Suchomimus. Let's start with the Carnotaurus. This figure is a bit smaller than the darker Carnotaurus that we just saw. The coloring overall is a lot more simplistic. There's not anywhere near as much shading. There's a little bit of white underneath its chin and some dark coloring on its neck and the top of its head. And the actions are a bit more simplistic too. There is one button at the top of its back for some sound effects. Let's compare that to this bright yellow Suchomimus figure. This Jurassic World figure stands a little bit taller than the Carnotaurus figure. It's got a huge spine that runs all the way from the head down to the tail. And just like the Spinosaurus, it has a long and narrow snout with a bunch of teeth on the inside. And this figure has two actions. The first is a jaw chomping action and the second is a tail swinging action. Our next two predators are this huge Scorpios Rex figure and this even larger T-Rex figure. Let's start with the T-Rex figure. It's got a light brown body with the darker coloring along the top and you can move all its limbs and it has the single button on the top of its head for the chomping action. Now the Scorpios Rex has a few more features. First off, I love the detailing on this figure. There's some bumps. You can see this huge ridge running down its back. It's got these tiny little spikes on its elbows. And of course, it's got the poisonous quills on the end of its tail. And it still has two action buttons. The first moves its jaw and check out those super awesome teeth. And the second button moves its arms for slashing. Our next two predators are first a Carcharodontosaurus versus a Cryolophosaurus. The Carcharodontosaurus is definitely a little bit bigger, but the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow than the Carcharodontosaurus. Comparing the size, the Carcharodontosaurus is a little bit bigger and the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow color. It's got movable limbs and you can use the tail to swing the head around. And the Carcharodontosaurus, though it's not as bright, it still has some bright orange running down its back and on its neck. And instead of the tail as the action button on this figure, there's a button on its back for a chomping action. <laughs> right here, we've got a Metriacanthosaurus versus an Allosaurus figure from Jurassic Park. Let's check out this vintage figure first. Now this Allosaurus looks quite a bit different from the new Jurassic World figures. It's got a different head shape and a slightly different body. But the cool thing about this figure is that there's multiple battle damage parts that you can take off of its body. Check that out and even on its tail too. Look at all that battle damage. That is super cool. Now let's compare that with the Metriacanthosaurus. I believe this is from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom era. It's pretty bright in color and it's around the same size as the Allosaurus figure. And this one doesn't have any battle damage, but it does have an action button on its back to control the jaw. <laughs> Before we continue on with the rest of the bin, let's actually open up this new Hammond Collection Concavenator. All right, now I think I only have one other Concavenator figure in my entire collection. 
so I'm super happy to add this one. It looks like it has quite a few different colors on its body. It's mainly got this blue, and there's some bright orange, brown, light tan, and then a very dark red right around its eyes. And since it's a Hammond Collection figure, it doesn't have any action buttons, but its body is super poseable. You can bend it at all of its limbs and joints. And its neck and head is especially poseable, which I really like. All in all, I think this figure stands up to the quality of all of the other Hammond Collection figures. Next up for our Predator versus Predator, we've got another Carnotaurus versus an Allosaurus. The Carnotaurus figure is quite a bit larger than the Allosaurus, so let's check this one out first. Now this figure has a bright orange body with the gray underbelly. It's got the tiny little front arms, just like the figure we saw earlier, and it also has the tail that you can move back and forth to move the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's see what's different about this Allosaurus figure. I think this one is even brighter in color. It's got the yellow and two tones of blue. It's got bigger front arms than the Carnotaurus figure. It's also got a tiny little row of spines running down its back to its tail. And this figure has two action buttons. The first operates the jaw and the second moves the arms up and down. The next two predators are this Dilophosaurus versus the Scorpio Venator. These figures are around the same size, but you'll see that the Dilophosaurus is a little bit longer. Now this Dilophosaurus is the basic edition, so there is no action button. You can move the limbs a little bit and you can activate the frills, but sadly, that's pretty much it. Let's see how that compares against the Scorpio Venator. This figure is pretty brightly colored as well, and you can move all of the limbs, but this figure does have an action button. When you press down on its back, it activates the chomping action. Check out those sound effects too. Next, we've got the Seatz Mikurarum versus the Irritator. Between these two, the Seatz Mikurarum is definitely the larger dinosaur. It's got tons of spikes on its head, running all the way down to its back. And like many of the other figures we've seen so far, you can move the tail back and forth to move its head and chomp its jaw. Now let's check out its competitor, this Irritator. Although it's a little bit smaller, it still has some really cool coloring with the two tones of blue on the top. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around as well. Although, you have to open and close the mouth manually. Let's keep on going. For our next verses, we've got a Ceratosaurus versus an Endoraptor. And see how much longer the Endoraptor is compared to the Ceratosaurus. This Endoraptor is the basic edition, so once again, there are no action buttons that you can press, but you can still move its arms, legs, and its tail. And it's still got some awesome spikes on its body. Let's see how the Ceratosaurus is different. It's got a dark green body with some black detailing on the top. This dinosaur seems a lot more bulkier in size. And of course, it's got an action at the top of its back for roaring and sound effects. This is the Baryonyx versus the Amber Collection Raptor. I think the Baryonyx is a little bit bigger, but this Raptor is so much more brighter. Because this figure is from the Amber Collection, there's a lot more attention to the coloring and the limbs can be posed in many more different ways too. This figure is perfect for posing on a display show. Now let's check out its competitor, the Baryonyx. Because this figure isn't from the Amber Collection, there's not as much that you can pose on its body. But the cool part about this figure is that it has an action button on its back. Check out that chomping action. Now let's compare two very different dinosaurs. This is a Pteranodon versus an Allosaurus. This Pteranodon figure has foldable wings that you can open up and it's probably a foot in length from wingtip to wingtip. And it's got a button on its back to flap the wings too. Plus, you can open and close its mouth manually. Now let's see this Allosaurus figure. This one is pretty simplistic in color. It has the gray on the sides and then the yellow detailing all along the top. Of course, it's got the iconic ridge right above its eye. And on this figure, there's one single action button for the jaw. These next two figures are smaller. I believe this one is called an Elephrosaurus versus, if I remember correctly, the Rugops Primus figure. The Elephrosaurus has a long and narrow snout and is mostly tan. It's got some brown as well. 
But this other figure, it's got darker coloring as well, and you can move its tiny little arms and open and close its mouth. Up next, we've got two different raptor species. This first one is a pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion, and this other one is, I believe, an Amber Collection Velociraptor. Just like many of the other Amber Collection figures, it is a lot more poseable than many of the normal figures. And they did a pretty decent job with its coloring as well. And the Pyroraptor has some decent detailing. You can check out all those feather designs right there. And the coolest part, I think, about the Pyroraptor are these huge feathers right at the top of its head. <laughs> And next, we've got a Jurassic World miniature T-Rex figure versus a Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Both these figures are pretty old, but this Velociraptor is the oldest. It's got a spring-loaded chomping action, and it features some pretty unique coloring that I don't think I have another Velociraptor that's colored like this. Now let's check out this other miniature T-Rex figure. This specific figure comes from an older line from Jurassic World. I think it was actually made by Hasbro. So it's got some battle damage right there on the side. And on this figure, you can move the tail back and forth and side to side to operate the jaw and the head. Today on Amazing Dinosaurs, we're gonna be checking out a huge collection of apex predators from Jurassic World and lining them up from biggest to smallest. So let's get started right over here with this super colossal T-Rex figure. This figure is featuring some custom gray skin and some bright red eyes, and I love the teeth on this figure. They're a lot darker than a lot of dinosaur teeth. So we're gonna put this one at the very left because it is the biggest one of this collection. Our next biggest apex predator in this collection is this super colossal Velociraptor Blue. This giant figure features some dark gray blue skin. It's got the iconic blue stripe running down the sides and it has some white shorter teeth compared to the T-Rex. Let's set it down right next to the super colossal T-Rex. All right, let's see. Next up in size is probably this Indominus Rex figure. This figure, although a little bit smaller than the super colossal, is one of the biggest predators that I have. And this one is actually the battle damage edition that you can turn it on and off with the click of a button. It also has an adjustable head and a button at the end of its tail that activates the jaw. Next up in size, we've got this awesome colored Spinosaurus figure. Now this figure was custom colored, which is why you'll see a lot more detail with the coloring and the shading compared to many of the other figures. Even the teeth are a much dirtier, nastier color, which I love, looks totally realistic. Let's grab our next dinosaur, which is this huge Pyroraptor figure. Now this figure is actually pretty special because it is battery operated and it responds to you. So let's tap it on the head and see what happens. Look at that. Its eyes change, it's moving around. Looks pretty angry right now. And you can touch its chin as well. It'll respond to you there. It's pretty cool. Check that out. Now its eyes are green, which means it's more friendly. All right, let's set it down right next to the Spinosaurus. Next up in size is one of my proudest dinosaur figures in my entire collection. I actually custom painted this Stomp and Escape T-Rex. It's got some brown on the top, green on the sides, and then the light yellow underbelly as well. This for sure is one of my best repaints and it's next in size, so let's put it down right next to the Pyroraptor. For our next biggest apex predator, we've got another T-Rex figure right here. This one is also in a green color, and it also has the black stripes on the top of its body and some on its face as well. And it has a button on the top of its head that you can use to open and close its mouth. Next up in size is actually a vintage figure from Jurassic Park. This is a Utah Raptor figure, and it stands almost as tall as the Jurassic World T-Rexes. And this figure, since it's one of the old Jurassic Park ones, it actually has rubber skin, so it feels quite a bit different and looks a bit different too. It's a lot less shiny. Over here is one of my favorite apex predator dinosaurs. This is the Carnotaurus. I love the coloring on this dinosaur and I love the way it looks. It looks kind of like a T-Rex, but it's got some horns on the top of its head and it's got much smaller arms too. This is a totally awesome figure. So let's set it down right next to the Utah Raptor. Up next, let's see. I think it's probably the Carcharodontosaurus figure right here. This figure features a dark blue body with some orange and dark brown detailing, and it has a button on its back 
that you can press for the chomping action. Let's set this down right next to the Carnotaurus. Next up, let's go with the Albertosaurus figure. And this one is actually a special edition Albertosaurus because it has the battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. You can even move the ribs up and down too. And check that out, it's got some slashes on its body as well. Let's put this next in line. Next in line is an Allosaurus figure. And this figure features a slide lever button on its back to activate roars and to open and close the jaws too. And it's pretty similar inside to the Albertosaurus, so let's put it right next to it. Next, I've got this Baryonyx figure with battle damage featured all over its body. It's got some on its leg, its neck, and there's an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Now it's pretty close in size to an Allosaurus figure, but check out the difference in size between their bodies. The Allosaurus is way bigger. Check it out, I've actually got another Baryonyx figure. This one features the green, dark green, and brown coloring on its body. And it's got a slide lever action on its back to activate the jaw and the sound effects. And this figure is basically the same size as the Baryonyx right next to it. Check it out, we've got another T-Rex figure. This is the Sound Surge Edition T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. So let's set it down right next to the Baryonyx figure. Just a little bit smaller. Over here is a yellow Crylophosaurus figure. Check out the crown on the top of its head. That's really cool. Plus with this figure, you can use its tail to move its head around in a real lifelike way. All right, let's set it down next in size. This next figure is a Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green coloring with the black detailing on the top. And like many of the newer figures, it has a slide lever action on its back to activate the jaw and the sound effects. For our next Apex Predator, we've got our first Dilophosaurus figure of this collection. This is an older figure and it features an action when you move the tail, it moves its head back and forth. All right, we're getting down to the much smaller figures. This next figure is another old Jurassic World figure. This one is a T-Rex. It's got the bright green coloring with some battle damage on the side and you can use the tail to move the head. This next Jurassic World Apex Predator is a Spinosaurus in some crazy coloring. It's got the bright red spine with stripes and the blue body as well. well check it out, there's even a little battle damage on the side too. Yeah. Let's set it down right next to the T-Rex. This figure is the Jurassic World Dominion Extreme Damage Velociraptor. It's got a button on the top of its back that you can use to reveal the battle damage right on the side. Here is another Velociraptor figure. This one is a bit older than the Dominion Velociraptor that we just saw, and it has a soft green body with the darker green on top. <laughs> Next, we've got an Atrociraptor figure that I'm sure you recognize from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. Let's set this down right next to the Velociraptors. <laughs> Our next apex predator is the Dimetrodon dinosaur. This figure features a huge spine running along its back and adjustable limbs and jaw as well. We're gonna set this one up in front of the other line because we're running out of space. So let's go to our final dinosaur, which is a Snap Squad Carnotaurus. Once again, one of my favorite dinosaurs. Let's set this right at the end. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out my huge collection of T-Rex figures from Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and more. And in fact, to start it off, I finally just got the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. So let's open this up first. I'm super excited. All right, here is the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. Let's check out the features of this dinosaur. So right off the bat, I noticed that it is a lot more adjustable than a lot of the other T-Rex figures. Like many of the other Hammond Collection figures, you see that it has many points of articulation. You can adjust the legs, the knees, 
the ankles, even at the arms, you can bend at the elbow too. You can also twist the torso and the neck so you can move its whole body back and forth like that. And the tail actually has two points of articulation. And let's see the face. So it's got some pretty cool coloring. When you open its mouth up, you see that it actually has these rubbery flaps on the outside. So it feels a lot more lifelike, as well as the tongue is a soft rubber. And the eyes are actually like a marble substance. So it's clear and then you can see the pupil inside. So the eyeballs aren't just painted on, those are actual like plastic eyes. And detail wise with the coloring, Obviously you can see it is a lot more detailed than the usual T-Rex figures from Jurassic World. The body has a more reflective, a very plasticky looking color to it, whereas the face has a much more matte finish, which I really like. Next up, we've got some huge, super colossal T-Rex figures. This is an orange T-Rex with a brown top. All these super colossal T-Rexes are the exact same size and they all come with the stomach compartment so you can actually feed them miniature dinosaurs down the throat and you can empty it out in the stomach compartment at the bottom. The next super colossal figure I believe was custom painted a long time ago. This T-Rex is a dark green color with the black detailing on the top. You can see it's even got some battle damage on its neck too, which I think is really cool. None of my other super colossal figures have battle damage like that. And it's got the white underbelly. It actually comes with some sound effects too. That when you open the mouth all the way, it's pretty quiet. But it actually roars too, which is different. I don't think any of my other super colossal figures have roar sound effects built into them. So that's pretty cool. The next super colossal figure is a bright red. This is probably one of the most evil looking super colossal figures that I have. Just look at those white eyes. There's actually no pupils painted in, so I think it makes it look a lot more evil. But check out this custom coloring. It's a super bright red body, kind of looks like fire in a way. It's got the yellow striping right along the black. This is probably my most unique looking super colossal figure. This one is really cool. And the last super colossal figure that I have is the Jurassic Park Dominion figure. This one came out pretty recently actually. It's got the dark brown body with the black on the top and the light underbelly. And all in all, it's about the same as the other super colossal figures in terms of movement and articulation. But this is a super cool, darker looking T-Rex and I'm super excited to see what super colossal figures they come out with next. Next up, we've got a orange T-Rex with battle damage all over its body. Look at the slashes on its tail, its leg, its torso, and some on its nose too. And this T-Rex is very adjustable actually. You can move the neck, you can move the legs and the tail, and it is quite poseable. Plus it's got an action button on the top of its head for the roaring. This is an old Jurassic Park figure. This T-Rex has a light underbelly and a camouflage green top. That's pretty cool. Like many of the Jurassic Park figures, its body is mostly rubber. It's got hard plastic legs. And with this figure, you can use the tail to swing the head back and forth. Next up, we've got a Jurassic World Tyrannosaurus Rex. This has the classic light brown body with the lighter underbelly and dark brown top. And this T-Rex has a chomping action using the button on its tail. That's a pretty cool motorized function that goes with the sound effects. This one is another old Jurassic Park figure. This is a miniature T-Rex with battle damage on the side. And once again, it's got that soft rubbery body and the hard plastic legs and arms. Way in the back here is another Jurassic Park figure with the rubber body and the hard plastic legs and arms. And this T-Rex actually has a stomach compartment too. So you can actually feed this T-Rex smaller dinosaurs, I think it originally came with a specific thing that you could feed it and it would swallow it all the way down to its stomach, but you could still fit other smaller dinosaurs in here too. Right over here is another Jurassic Park figure. This is actually the same model as the one we just saw, but it is custom colored. Check out that super bright orange head 
and lighter green on top and it fades down to a darker green on the bottom. And just like the other one, this has a stomach compartment as well. So you can feed this one miniature dinosaurs. It's got a whole lot of teeth too. And they're very brightly colored. This is another Jurassic World figure. And this one actually has a few different features. First of all, you can see that this figure has a button on its foot that activates stomping sound effects. I think the batteries are out in this figure, but it also has the tail control so that when you move the tail, it moves its head around, chomps, and it roars too. Here we've got an old Jurassic World figure. This might be one of the oldest Jurassic World figures that I have. And it's very different from many of the other Jurassic World Tyrannosaurus Rexes that I have. You can see that it has a rubberized neck for flexibility. And the main feature on this T-Rex is that you can cock it up into a roaring position. And then when you activate the tail, it swings its head down for chomping. Here is the new Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. This one also came out pretty recently this year. You can see it's got the darker body with the black and the dark brown on the sides and the lighter underbelly. And this figure has a much bigger neck and head than many of the other T-Rexes that I have, which I find pretty interesting. It's a pretty big difference. And this T-Rex also has the action button for roaring and you can control its head too. You can hear that the sound effects are kind of messed up, so I'm not sure what happened. I don't, know, I don't know if it's just this figure or if it happened in a lot of the figures, but the sound effects are a little bit broken in this one. Next up, we've got an old Jurassic World figure. This is a smaller T-Rex, a bit smaller than most of the other T-Rexes in here, but it's still got the adjustable arms and legs, and its whole body is actually a very hard plastic. This T-Rex has one action button on its back for the chomping and roaring. Here's another T-Rex with the super cool camouflage coloring. It's got the bright green on the sides and then brown, black, and a little bit of green all over the rest of its body. This T-Rex figure also has the foot stomping action and I believe there's batteries in this one. So you can hear those stomping sound effects. And just like the other one that had the button on its foot, you can control the tail for roars. and for chomps too. Next up is a more recent Jurassic World Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure actually comes with a head cage that you can place on it and lock it in. And this figure is actually designed to break free from that cage using the action button on its back. Let's check it out. Plus, this figure has a foot stomp action when you twist the tail. Here's another old Jurassic Park figure with the rubber body and the hard plastic legs and arms. The coloring on this figure is a bit more unique. It's got a dark red maroon color with the black spots. And this figure has a function that when you squeeze the stomach, it opens and closes its mouth. And it doesn't work too well anymore because it's super old, but you can see that it used to be able to do that. Right over here, we've got another pretty uniquely colored Tyrannosaurus Rex figure from Jurassic World. This one is dark green with black detailing on the top, and it's got the light underbelly as well. And this figure is pretty poseable too. Can move the neck around to look in any direction, can move the legs and arms and the tail. And it's got the button on the top of its head to open and close its jaws. Now this T-Rex has a pretty unique action. I don't think I have any other figures that do something quite like this. Check it out. When you press this action button on its back, it actually does a tearing action. It twists its neck to the side and backwards as if it's tearing off a huge piece of meat. There's also a second action button to control the tail too. That is pretty cool. I do like how unique this action is. Down here, we've got a smaller model T-Rex. You can open and close the jaw on this figure. The rest of its limbs are stuck in place though, but I do love the coloring on this one. It's like an orange red color with black detailing and it is pretty detailed all throughout its body. Here we've got another old Jurassic World figure and this is actually a hybrid Tyrannosaurus. I believe it is a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus. You can tell by those huge frills right in front of its face. And on this figure, you can wiggle the tail around to control the mouth and the neck too. 
Over here is another Jurassic World figure. This figure is light brown on the bottom sides and has the dark brown on the top and is pretty adjustable just like many of the other T-Rex figures. And of course you've got the button at the top of its head for opening its jaw. Next up is another model Tyrannosaurus Rex. I can't remember which brand made this one. And like many of the other model T-Rexes that I have, you can open and close the jaw, but the other limbs are stuck in place. And it is, this T-Rex is in a standing roaring pose, it looks like. Here is another old Jurassic World Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one is also a hybrid, as you can see from these spines on its back. T-Rexes definitely don't have those normally. So you can actually hide those spines by pressing it down into the body and then using the action button to have them pop out. Plus that same button actually operates the jaw too. Next up, we've got a pretty unique looking Tyrannosaurus model. This has the black stripes on the top with an orange brown on the sides and a lighter underbelly. And on this figure, you actually can't move anything, not even the jaw. I'd say the most prominent feature of this model is the bright eyes. Back here, we've got another Jurassic World figure, but this one is another custom colored T-Rex. This looks a lot like the super colossal one that I showed you earlier. It's got the bright red, looks kind of like flames and the black on the top. And check out those eyes too. These don't have pupils either, which makes it look a lot more evil, I think. This is a light green model T-Rex. This one also does not have any movable parts and is actually like a bit softer of plastic than most of the figures that I have. This is the Jurassic World T-Rex with extreme battle damage. Using the action button on its back, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off just with the click of that button. And the rest of the T-Rex is fully posable as well. Can move the neck, can keep the mouth open, can adjust the arms, the legs, and the tail too. This is a smaller T-Rex figure. It's got the light brown and dark brown striping. It's got a little battle damage along its side. And this figure is also in a standing roaring pose. This next model T-Rex is a darker green color with black striping and a lighter underbelly. And on this model, you can open and close the jaw. And it's got a mouth full of teeth right there. Next up, another Jurassic World T-Rex. This one is a dark gray brown color with a darker brown on the top and is adjustable just like the other Jurassic World T-Rexes with the legs, the arms, the tail, and the neck too. This model T-Rex is in a standing roar pose and is also a dark green color with a little bit of black striping. It's very subtle throughout its body. It's also got the light underbelly and a bright pink mouth. This is an old Jurassic World figure. I've actually got another one that's pretty similar to it, but with different coloring. Both of these T-Rexes have the battle damage on the side and have adjustable arms and legs. And with both, you can use the tail to control the neck and the jaw. Just a few more left. Here is a pretty uniquely colored Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's got the yellow and green all over its body. You can see all those individual scales, which I think is really cool. And it's got some intricate detailing right along its eyes. It's almost like a crown or something like that. And you can open and close the jaw on this T-Rex too. And we've got a few more smaller T-Rex figures. This first one is a Jurassic World figure. It's a baby T-Rex. It's got an action with its tail used to open and close its jaw. And this other figure, uh, I'm not sure which brand made this one, but it is in a standing roar pose as well. And you can open and close the jaw. And these are the last two T-Rexes of the bin. The first one is a yellow tan color with a darker green and a little bit of gray on the top. And this other T-Rex is the classic brown orange color. Both of these have articulated tails, so you can actually move them in a bunch of different directions. And you can adjust the legs on both as well, and even open and close the jaws. <laughs> Whoa!
Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Indominus Rex. First up, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Super Colossal T-Rex. This figure has a dark brown side and black top with a lighter underbelly, and it's got adjustable arms, legs, and a tail. And up front, I can tell that the plastic is a bit softer on its neck. The rest of its head is a hard plastic, and you can open it up way wide, and you're able to actually swallow smaller dinosaurs down to the stomach compartment. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got another super colossal figure. This is an Indominus Rex. It has the classic light gray body, and it's pretty detailed with all the spikes and the spines. It's got some spines up there, it's got some behind its elbows, it's got those super long claws on its hand. And just like the T-Rex, you can adjust the arms, the legs, you can swing the tail around. But on this figure, you can also twist the neck too. Here is the next figure. It's another super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one has the light orange body with the lighter underbelly. And just like the Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex, the neck is actually a little bit softer. It's like a softer plastic right there and you can move the arms, the legs, the tail, just like the other ones. And of course, this one has the stomach compartment for eating smaller dinosaurs. And we've got some brand new figures that we can open up first before we dive into the rest of them. This one is the PNSO Wilson the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is super detailed. Look at all that texturing on its body, all the various shades of colors. It's like lighter right here, there's darker shades. These are a lot more detailed than a lot of the Jurassic World figurines. But unfortunately, they're not as poseable. Usually you can only move their jaw. All right, let's dig in. This first Tyrannosaurus Rex is the Battle Damage Edition. It has the light orange body. You can see that there's scrapes and slashes all over its body, even on its face and nose. And it has a fully poseable body, plus the button at the top of the head for chomping. Over here, we've got an Indominus Rex, the Extreme Battle Damage Edition. With this one, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off. That's so cool. Each time that you press that button, it delivers a roar sound effect too. On the rest of the figure, the arms and the legs are fully adjustable. And there's a button at the tail that controls the jaw. Here we've got the epic Roarin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is light brown on the sides, dark brown on top, and the lighter underbelly. And the coolest part is the roar and shaking sound effects. Over here is the Jurassic World Chompin' Indominus Rex. This is a bit of an older figure. It's got the hard plastic on the back and the rubber on the neck and head. You don't see that too often nowadays. And for the chomping action, you pull down on the arms to open and close its mouth. I believe this figure is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has one big special feature. Press this button on its back and it does a tearing action. Swings its head around and closes its mouth real fast. And there is also a secondary button that swings its tail back and forth. I believe this figure is the Destroy and Devour Indominus Rex, but you'll notice that it has some custom coloring. So. This definitely does not look like your typical Indominus Rex. And this figure really pops out on my display shelves. My favorite part being those green eyes right there. Next up is the Stomp and Escape Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has two features. The first, when you press this button on its back, it'll escape from its face cage. Just like that. And the second feature is stomping. When you twist the tail, it stomps its feet up and down. Comes with sound effects too.
Here we have a classically colored destroy and devour Indominus Rex. This figure is pretty detailed over its body. It's got tons of spikes on its back. It's got those spines right along its neck. It's got some unique coloring along its eyes, right next to those orange eyes. And this figure has a few different features. First, when you bend the legs forward, it'll actually point its head down. And when you bend them back, it'll point its head upwards. Secondly, there's a button on its back that's used for slashing. And finally, there's a button on its tail for the chomping and roaring. Here is an extreme battle damage Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is pretty poseable. You're able to move the arms, the legs, and swing the tail around, as well as adjust the neck and open and shut the jaw by hand. But the coolest part is the battle damage that you can turn on and off, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw earlier. And you can see it on both sides. Next up, we've got the Extreme Chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has a more gray-brown coloring on the sides with a darker brown on top and the light underbelly and is adjustable just like many of the other figures. And it has the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. Here is another Indominus Rex, but this does not look normal. This is a hybrid Indominus Rex. So this one has some pretty awesome and unique coloring along its body. It's the only Indominus Rex to have red on its body, I believe, as well as the gold on its arms and its belly. And this dinosaur has a few features. First is a hidden button that activates its spikes on its back. Secondly is the chopping action, which you activate by moving its arm. Here we have, I believe, another extreme chomping Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one, though, has the orange body with the brown coloring on the top with the lighter underbelly. And of course, that chomping button right on the top of its head. This is the Stomp and Chomp Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has the typical orange body with the brown top and lighter underbelly. And what I really like about this figure is that you use the tail to control the head and the whole front of the body for chomping and for roaring too. Here we've got a model Indominus Rex, which I don't see that many of. But what I like about these models is that they're so much more intricately colored and textured. Check out those spikes on its back. They're so small on all those little spines and all those little horn things right along its back all the way to its tail. And just like many other model figures, you can't adjust the arms and legs. Only the mouth can open and close in these. But these sure look epic on a display shelf. Next up is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is one of the few Tyrannosauruses that I have that are this cool green color with the black detailing on the top. It has that same button on the top of its head for chomping. And this T-Rex actually came with a baby T-Rex in the same pack. So these came together. Here is a smaller Indominus Rex figure with a battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And while most of its body is that iconic gray color, it does have some gray green coloring along the top, which is different from most of my other Indominus Rex figures. Plus this figure comes with a chomping action when you move the tail. Way at the bottom here, I've actually got the T-Rex anatomy kit. Now I am missing a few pieces to it. It's really easy to misplace these, but it's really cool that you can take this apart to check out all the different body parts within. You can take the ribs out, you can see this muscle on its tail and the bone behind it, and you can even take apart this foot right here and see what's underneath. How cool is that? This is the Bashers and Biters Indominus Rex figure. This is from the old Jurassic World toy line, and it has similar coloring to the rest of them, a little bit darker gray on top, got the battle damage on the side, and of course you can move the tail to control the face. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex figure, but I believe it is a juvenile or even a baby T-Rex. You can see it's got the mouth restraint on, because the humans are actually healing its leg. It's got a broken leg, so it's got this bandage around it. And this figure is very adjustable too. You can move all the limbs, even at the elbows. 
and of course you can move the tail and twist the head around and even open and close the mouth. This is the feeding frenzy Indominus Rex. This is a lot smaller than most of the Indominus Rex figures, but it has quite a large face to it. And it has a few features. The first is when you press this button on its nose, get some sound effects. And the second is when you move the tail, it opens its mouth to eat, and then you can press down on its tongue to clamp shut its jaw. And last of all, I've got a few small figures in here. Got a Lego Indominus Rex figure, which is pretty cool. It's the only Lego figure that I have in this bin, at least. We've also got some miniature Tyrannosaurus Rex figures from Jurassic World. This one is green with a light underbelly. And the second one here is brown with a light underbelly as well. And I also have these two Indominus Rexes in this bin. The first one is white with silver, reflective silver on its top. And you can open and close the jaw. And the second one is a clear Indominus Rex. You can't move any parts on this figure, but I think it's pretty cool that it's see-through. This is a collection of 100 Jurassic World figures, and I'm gonna be showing you all of them today. Let's get started with this giant Spinosaurus figure. This specific figure is actually from the Legacy Collection, and they don't make this one anymore, so it's pretty hard to find. It's got the dark green coloring, different than all the other Spinosaurus figures, and of course, the jaw chomping button. Next, we've got a big Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. I believe this one is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got a light brown body. Its arms, its legs, its tail, and its head are adjustable. And there's a button for chomping. Next up, we've got another T-Rex figure. This one's pretty similar to the one that we just saw, except it's got some slightly darker coloring, darker brown on the top, and of course, the jaw chomping button. Over here is an herbivore dinosaur. This is the Pentaceratops. It's got a huge variety of horns on its head and on its frill as well. And it's got two action buttons, one to move the head up and down and one to swing the torso back and forth. Moving right along here, we've got the Sound Surge Carnotaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's check out these sound effects. Up next is a figure that I bought pretty recently, actually. This is the Hammond Collection Concavenator. Check out that really cool coloring with the orange fading into the brown and the blue and the orange and red stripes along the top. Up in front here, we've got another giant T-Rex figure. This one is a bright orange color and it has the same movements and actions as the T-Rexes that we saw earlier. This is an Indominus Rex figure, but it's actually not made by Hasbro. It's made by a model company. So it looks a lot different and it has a lot more detail than many of the Hasbro figures. I love those little spikes running along its back and on the top of its head. Right next to that, we've got a weird looking dinosaur. This is the Sarcosuchus. It's got a super short and super long body. It's got some really cool spikes that run all the way down its back to its tail. And you can use the tail to control the head and chomp the jaw too. Oh. This next one is an Oranosaurus from Hasbro. I believe this is an herbivore dinosaur. Definitely doesn't look like a scary predator and it's got some cool coloring on its body. Plus an action button right on the side to move its head up and down. I've got a super bright dinosaur in here. This is a Triceratops. It looks a lot less realistic than many of my other figures, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some red on the top and the blue. Kind of looks like a baby Triceratops. Way in the back here, we've got another Indominus Rex figure, but this one looks quite a bit different. It's got really short legs and a giant head. This is from the Rowdy Roars collection, and it actually has a few different actions. You can get it to shut its mouth, and you can use the tail to hold the head up. Way in the back here, we've got a Krylophosaurus figure with the dark blue and orange coloring. And this figure comes with sound effects that happen when you move its tail around. Up next, let's see, let's go with this Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green and black coloring. And it's got a slide lever action at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. 
This right here is the Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops figure. It's got some unique coloring with the orange in the front, right next to the dark green, and then some lighter green along the back of its body. Plus, it has a roaring action when you press down on its back. Ooh, check it out. Here is a Therizinosaurus figure. This has some bright red and some soft blue coloring. Of course, it's got the huge claws on its hands and it has a really long neck and a bunch of small teeth in its mouth too. Over here, we've got a few flying dinosaurs. These are smaller figures. I believe that both of these are Pteranodon figures. This first one's got some cool reflective gold coloring on its head. The rest of its body is like a dark green color. And the second one is more of a grayish color. It still has some yellow on its face, but this one actually has a button on its back to flap its wings. Looks like we've got another big dinosaur in here. This one looks quite a bit different. It's still made by Hasbro, but it's a different toy line than the rest. But check it out, it still has a chomping action when you press down on its body. Looks like we've got yet another T-Rex in here. This one is the dark green with black detailing along the top and is one of my personal favorites. Its limbs are adjustable just like the other T-Rexes and it has the jaw chomping action. Check it out, here is the second Therizinosaurus of the collection. And this one is made by Hasbro for the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got a bunch of cool feather texturing all over its body with the red stripe. And it has a jaw chomping action that you can activate by pressing the button on its tail. Oh, look at this, way down here, we've got a Lego collection. Uh, this might be a Carnotaurus, I think, because it's got those two huge horns at the top of its head. It's got some pretty crazy coloring overall though. It's got bright blue, some neon orange. Check out those yellow eyes too. Here's another Pteranodon figure, but it is way larger than the ones that we saw earlier. You can unfold its wings to show the full wingspan and check out the detailing along its body, which is pretty neat. And it's got two action buttons on its back, one for the jaw and one for flapping its wings. I've got another big Lego dinosaur in here. This one might be a Baryonyx, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what dinosaur species you think this is. In the back here, we've got a good old Ankylosaurus figure. This one has the blue top with the spikes all over the top and the sides and a slide lever action to swing its tail around. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure. This is a basic series Dilophosaurus, so there's no action button, but it's still got some ginormous frills in the front with a huge yellow crown and a dark red body with adjustable limbs. Looks like I've got some Velociraptor figures in here as well. Let's check out these three. This first one is an extreme battle damage Velociraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Check that out, you can turn it on and off. There's also the Velociraptor blue figure with opposable legs, arms, and mouth. And there's this crazy looking Velociraptor that has some really cool detailing along its back. Plus, it's got some golden eyes too. Up next, we've got the Majingasaurus. This figure is a little bit bigger than the Velociraptor figures and it's got some yellow, blue, and green on its body. Plus, you can use the tail to move the head around. In the back here, we've got what looks like a Brachiosaurus figure with dark red and some yellow detailing along with the black too. Check out those green eyes. I found another Velociraptor figure. This is an older figure. It's got the tan with the green striping, but unfortunately there is no action button on this figurine. Here's another Velociraptor figure from the same era. This one has the dark green with black stripes on the top and the yellow underbelly. But once again, sadly, there is no action button on this figure. Check out this weird looking dinosaur. This figure is designed to hang on to your finger and it actually is battery powered with sound effects and with movement. Over here, we've got the Sauropelta with the light green and dark green coloring. Here is the Zunoceratops figure with the yellow and gray coloring. It's got the two huge horns on its head. There's also a few Pachycephalosaurus figures in here. This one has battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And the other Pachycephalosaurus actually has a headbutting action when you move its tail. 
Here's another winged figure. This is a Dimorphodon. It's got the fiery red and orange coloring on the underside of its wings and the dark green along the top. Oh, look at that. There's actually another Sauropelta figure right here. This one has the brown and clay red coloring. Next up is a small figure. This is a Gallimimus, although it's got some pretty detailed coloring running along its back all the way to its head. Here's a Stigimaloc figure. It's got a hard head just like the patchy cephalosaurus, but it's also got some spikes coming out right behind it. And on this figure, you can use the tail for the headbutting action too. Ooh, right over here, we've got an Atrociraptor figure. This one is tan and it is in the stealth pose. You can see it's crawling along the ground. This one looks to be like a Kentrosaurus figure. This one was not made by Hasbro, so it looks quite a bit different but it's still got those iconic horns coming right outside of the shoulders. Up next is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. Check out that super bright and colorful frills. Now here's a teeny tiny dinosaur figure. This is from the Snap Squads. And this is a Triceratops figure. Look at that, it's even got teeth on the inside. That's a nice little detail. And the last figure in this first bin is the Elephrosaurus figure. I think this one's pretty recent, came out in 2023. Let's dive into our second bin of dinosaur figures right here. But before we do, let's check out these officially licensed Jurassic World Heroes of Gujitsu figures. This first one is a Mosasaurus figure. It's got a chomp attack action. It looks like it has fish on the inside or something like that from that picture. So let's open it up and check it out. Here we go, and wow, this thing is extremely squishy and stretchy. It also comes with that chopping action, so you can snap its jaw shut, just like that. But the biggest feature of this is its gooey body. Super squishy, it's still got the texture like a normal Mosasaurus, and it's got its fins as well. But when you squeeze it, let's see what's on the inside of it. All right, there is fish bones in there. That is super crazy looking. Wow, they're just floating in all that goo. It's pretty relaxing to squeeze, actually. That's really cool that they actually put something inside the goo, so you can only see it when you expand it. The other goo jitsu figure that I got for Jurassic World is this Pyroraptor. It also has the chomp attack action, and instead of having goo on the inside, this one is super stretchy. So let's open it up and see. Oh yeah, this one feels totally different from the Mosasaurus. It's actually like pretty hard. You can squeeze it and it moves, but it doesn't have the goo on the inside like the other figure does. You can open and close its mouth for that jaw chomping action. And this one has some feather texturing on its body as well. It has some huge feathers on its arms. Now this figure is supposed to stretch really far, so let's see if we can stretch it. Oh, look at that. There are some different things on the inside of even this figure. Wow, that is super stretchy. It's really strong and hard to stretch. Let's see if we can find out what is that. It looks like feathers are on the inside of this figure. All right, let's get back to our regular figures. I've got an Albertosaurus figure right here with the green and the orange striping on the side. It also has a chomp button on its tail too. Here is the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. It's got the classic gray coloring with a little bit of brown and spikes all over its body. And of course, some really cool sound effects. Here's a pretty new figure. This is the Siamosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It stands on all four legs. It has some pretty cool paint detailing on its body. It's got a huge spine, just like a Spinosaurus, and a jaw chopping action by pressing the button on its tail. Back here is a Carnotaurus figure with a dark brown and black coloring. It's got a little bit of battle damage right on its nose, and it has posable legs, arms, and a tail, and you can use the tail to move the head around too. Check it out, here is the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. This one is way more poseable than the standard figures. And I think this one looks a bit more lifelike because of how detailed it is. Look at all that wear and tear on its horns. That's really cool. 
This is the Tarbosaurus figure. It's got a mostly dark body. It has some black striping along its back. And the brightest part is its neck and its chin. It's also got these really cool huge spines that run all the way down its tail. And of course, a button on its tail for the chomping action. <laughs> Up next is the Carcharodontosaurus figure. This figure too has some spikes running down its back to its tail, and it also has an action button for the chomping action too. Plus, all of its limbs are posable too. From Jurassic World Dominion, this is the Rajasaurus figure. It's a bit smaller than some of the other predator figures, but it has a really cool chomping action when you press down on its body. This is an aquatic dinosaur. I believe it's called the Kronosaurus. It's got some huge teeth in its mouth, as well as some teeny tiny ones. And it has an action button on its back so you can swing its head back and forth. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure. This one looks quite a bit different though. It's a lot more bright in color. Its spikes on its back are this gold color. The horns are also a bright color too. And it has this really big action button on its back for chomping. Way back here is an herbivore. This is the Cynoceratops with the light green and the bright yellow coloring. And this figure has a roaring action when you press down on its body. Oh, look at this. This is actually another Cynoceratops figure, but this one is in the gray and tan coloring. And instead of just a simple roaring action, it actually has a tail that moves the head around with sound effects. Here is the Parasaurolophus figure. It's mostly yellow, it's got some brown striping with two action buttons. One controls the head, moves it up and down, and the other button controls its tail. <laughs> Check it out, we've got another Lego Jurassic World figure. This one, I believe, is a Brachiosaurus figure because it's got a huge body that walks on all four legs and it's got this really long and flexible neck. Pretty cool, it's got some cool slash detailing on its body and it's pretty large for a Lego figure. Next up is the Metriocanthosaurus figure in the yellow and green color. Let's check out that chomp action. Back here is a model T-Rex figure. Looks like it's an orange color. It's got some really cool muscle detailing all over its body. And here's another Lego figure. This one though is a T-Rex. Check that out. It's a dark brown color. It has some darker brown detailing all over its body. And you can even open and close its jaw. This next figure is not a dinosaur. It is actually a human inside one of those balls from the Jurassic World movie that you can drive around in. It's pretty cool. This is a baby Brachiosaurus figure with the gray and purple-ish color on the top. Well, let's check out these Stegosauruses next. I've actually got quite a few in here. This first one is a newer one. It's got the brown, green, and clay red coloring. And it has the action when you press down on its spine, it swings its tail back and forth. Down here somewhere, up oh, here it is, is the baby version of that Stegosaurus. It's got the same type of coloring with the green and the clay red on the top, but it is a whole lot smaller. Look at that, even its tail is really small. Let's see what other Stegosaurus is. Here's one. This Stegosaurus is brown, it's got some tan and green, and this one has two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button does the classic tail swinging action. And we've got another Triceratops in here. This one is in a gray and darker gray color. It's got the light pink underbelly. And of course, the tail slashing action. Oh, look at that. I've actually got another one with identical coloring in here. So this one is actually just a twin. Here's another large dinosaur. This one's actually really cool. This is a Velociraptor beta figure. And it's pretty cool because it has some lifelike movements can have it walk side to side like this, and you can even have it chomp by pressing down on its body. I've got another Ankylosaurus figure in here. This one has the gray, green, and brown coloring, plus a button for the tail swinging action. I see a few Baryonyx figures in here. This first one, I believe, is Baryonyx Grim, or Limbo, maybe? I actually can't remember their name. It's got the bright green coloring, and the action button on the top for chomping its jaw. Here is the second Baryonyx figure in here with totally different coloring. I love the bright blue coloring along the top of its head and the slide lever action. 
through the rolling and sound effects. And the third Baryonyx is right here. It's got battle damage on its neck and on its leg. And of course it has a button for the chomping action. Looks like I've got a few Ceratosaurus figures in here as well. This first one I think is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the iconic red coloring running all the way up to its head with the slide lever action for roaring and sound effects. <laughs> And this other Ceratosaurus is actually a Hammond collection figure. It's got some pretty similar coloring to the Ceratosaurus we just saw, but its limbs are way more poseable, and I think there's a bit more texturing on its skin too. Hidden in the bottom here is another Carnotaurus figure. This one is from the Fallen Kingdom collection, so it's actually a bit older than a lot of these other figures. And it's got the button on its back for the chomping action. Let's see, what's next? Let's go with this Allosaurus figure. We haven't seen that many Allosauruses in this collection, but this one is probably one of my favorites because of its color. Plus, it's got those little spikes on the top of its head that run down its back. And of course, a slide lever action for roaring with sound effects. Here's another ginormous winged dinosaur, I believe. It's actually another Pteranodon figure. Once its wings are opened up, you can see that there are two buttons, one for its mouth, and one to flap the wings. This next figure is the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's press that button on the top of its head. Oh, you know what? Here's another Atrociraptor figure, and I got this one pretty recently too. It has some really cool bright red coloring along its arms and on its shoulders, and it's got this interesting backpack tracker system on it too. Down at the bottom here, here's another one of those figures that fit on your finger. But just like that, they rest on your finger, and they have sound effects and movement too. Look at that, even its eyes blink. This next figure is a classic Triceratops figure. It's got some bright red coloring though, which is a cool feature. I've also got another Stegosaurus in here. It's got some pretty realistic coloring and some bright spines. Aww. Here is a very small Paraceralophus figure. It's got some cool brown coloring with some lighter brown on the sides, and it looks like it has some tiny yellow eyes. <laughs> This next figure down here, I believe, is called a Protoceratops. This is a pretty weird looking dinosaur. It's got some bright coloring all over its body too. Up next, I think I've got a couple Herrerasaurus figures. This first figure is a battle damage one that you can open and close right on the side. And this other figure is not a battle damage edition, but it has some gray and white detailing. I've also got a bright Monolophosaurus figure right here, and it has a chomping action that's activated by moving the tail. This one's pretty cool. This is actually a Dilophosaurus without the frills, which as it turns out, may be fictional from the Jurassic Park movie. I've got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one looks a lot like Velociraptor Blue, but it's not made by Hasbro. Still got the iconic blue stripe running down its side. And there's also this similar looking Velociraptor. It's got some white with some black spots on its body and a little bit of red along the top of its head. And this one is made by Mattel. It features some bright red coloring with purple stripes running down the sides. All right, only a few left. This one, I'm actually not sure what it is, but it looks like it's holding an egg. Maybe it's stealing it. Comment below if you recognize this dinosaur species. Here's a crazy looking dinosaur that walks on all four legs. It looks kind of like a Sarcosuchus, but I'm actually not sure. And this figure is really feathered. Check out all that feather design on its tail and on its arms and its back. And it's got a pretty wild looking head too. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.